Presenting the class of 2018, next up on our list of 11 incredible inductees, the guy who gets credit for creating the classic rock format. He's the president of Jacobs Media, Fred Jacobs, and to induct him today, his very own brother, vice president of Jacobs Media, Paul Jacobs. Come on up here, Paul. Good evening, and uh, congratulations to all of this year's inductees. When we got the call that Fred was inducted into the Hall of Fame, the reaction around the office was, seriously? <laughs> Not because we didn't think he didn't belong, but when we think of the Radio Hall of Fame, as Scott said, we think of Ronald Reagan, we think of Paley, we think of Murrow. For those of us from Detroit, we think of the people we grew up with, Ernie Harwell, J.P. McCarthy, Dick Purton. How does a programming consultant fit into that list? You know, to many consultants, they're a budget line, a voice in the room, somebody who shows up a couple times a year, gives their advice, and then goes on to the next city. And if you look at the list of past inductees into this hall, you will not find a consultant anywhere. Sure, over the past four decades, Fred has accomplished a lot. He programmed the legendary WRIF in Detroit and helped launch it into its glory years. With the start of Jacobs Media, as you heard, he created the classic rock format and the Edge brand for Alternative. He was one of the first to champion web-based research and for the tech surveys for commercial, public, and Christian radio. He helped identify the changes that were happening in the dashboard of connected cars and created the Dash Conference, where he brought together leaders of the radio industry with the automotive industry so we could collaborate on our future. He helped lead the charge for the industry to get into smartphones with the launch of Jake Apps, and he even sold radio CEOs to come to Las Vegas the first week of January every year, don a pair of tennis shoes, and trip through the Consumer Electronics Show because he wanted to make sure they didn't miss the future. So those are amazing innovative efforts that have helped elevate radio's game, but is that enough to get into the Hall of Fame? Lots of really talented, successful people have garnered huge ratings, built fantastic companies, or invented breakthrough products, and they haven't been inducted. So there's got to be something more. Now, I've known Fred longer than everyone in the room, except for our mother, who is here this evening. I've seen him in action every day, and after giving it a lot of thought, I've come to realize it takes a lot more than putting points on the board to be honored here this evening. What it takes comes down to one simple thing. It's not just about doing thing, uh, great things, it's about doing things great. And that's the definition of Fred's career. And it's why a programming consultant from Detroit is joining the legends tonight here in the hall. How does Fred do things great? It's his incomparable drive, incredibly high standards, the ability to see around corners to identify what's next. He's up each morning at 5 a.m. writing the blog uh, because he has a lot to say to the industry and he wants to make sure the radio stays aware of the challenges and opportunities before it. He finds time to meet with and talk to colleagues who are at career crossroads or out of a job at Starbucks at 7 a.m., or talk to high school radio students, where he always says he learns more from them than he teaches them. If there's one word that truly defines Fred Jacobs and why he's here this evening, it is ability to elevate everyone and everything around him. He simply makes everyone better. Our clients, our staff, me and our industry. Let's enjoy a brief video. Fred Jacobs knew that rock and roll would never die, but become classic, as in classic rock, on hundreds of radio stations nationwide. Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, The Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd, The Eagles, Fleetwood Mac, carefully created. The classic rock radio format has become the soundtrack for generations of radio listeners, with Fred Jacobs as the curator. When public radio operators realized the audience sensibility Fred Jacobs possessed, they invited him to their party. Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> Fred sees the future ahead of most and shared his vision on how smartphones and apps would affect radio listening with broadcasters in virtually every format. 
Being a Motor City man, he recognized how important it is that radio operators got to know automotive manufacturers and the people deciding what goes in the dashboard. The Dash Conference in 2013 was another pioneering effort by Fred Jacobs, benefiting radio for years to come. Fred Jacobs, his keen understanding of the radio listener has impacted thousands and thousands of radio stations for the good. Fred Jacobs, a 2018 inductee to the Radio Hall of Fame. It's with tremendous professional pride and unmeasurable personal pride that I welcome the next member of the National Radio Hall of Fame's class of 2018, my brother, partner, and closest friend, Fred Jacobs. Well done. Thank you, guys. Hang on to that, I, I will. <laughs> well, here we are. Um, <laughs> So, uh, first and foremost, congrats to uh, the other inductees. Uh, thanks to the committee, and especially Craig Kitchen, who really made what could have been a very complex process so seamless. Uh, if you've already read the program and certainly listened to Paul's remarks, you know I am the outlier uh, tonight, but truth be told, that's really my comfort zone. I'm really used to sort of being something of a nonconformist. I'm left-handed. I'm from Detroit, as Paul told you. Uh, and uh, this is like a weird evening anyway, right? I mean, who would have thought that, that we'd be trudging here in uh, midtown Manhattan in November in the middle of a snowstorm? So that's kind of my life, right? I've done things the hard way, and it's really exciting to be here with all of you uh, tonight. As Paul said, a consultant in this august uh, institution is very much an anomaly, and believe me when I tell you this moment is not the least bit lost on me. It, it's kind of like if they gave the Heisman Trophy to a punter, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> I know. It, so don't think for a moment that I don't appreciate what is happening here. Radio is very much a family business, and I'm not just talking about the great companies now being operated by second and third generation broadcasters like the Fields. I know uh, they're over there. Yeah, there you go. Give yourself a hand. The Beasleys sitting over in this zone here. The Hubbards are back there somewhere. I mean, these family business are what continuing to make radio great. Uh, as lonesome and scary as it was in the early years when I started the company, being on my own has really made it possible for me to be a part of many different families, and that's one of the reasons why I feel so fortunate and lucky to be a part of so many of your families and your companies. There's my Michigan State family, guys like Larry Eslack and Gary Reed, who is here tonight, who taught me a ton early on in my career. Uh, my MAB family, Michigan Association of Broadcasters, always supporting me. My ABC Radio family, what a company that was. Marty Greenberg, Jay Hoker, and a group of brilliant programmers that included Larry Berger, who recently passed away. Go ahead. But is remembered by many in this room. And my dear friend Tom Bender, who first brought me into the Riff family, and who has mentored me since the late 70s in every phase of this business and in life. My MTV VH1 family, Yarl Moan, Jeff Rowe, and Tom Calderon, uh, who was at Jacobs Media before leaving for the greener pastures of MTV and beyond. Jeff Rowe is a big reason why I'm here tonight. He championed me to this committee and went to bat for my nomination, and for that I'm so appreciative. Thank you, Jeff. There's my public radio family, a group of caring, passionate, brilliant broadcasters who remind us that great radio comes in many different forms, even podcasts. And some unbelievable PDs and programming gurus who have taken my rough schematic for rock, classic rock, and alternative, and really made it come to life in their markets. And there's a whole lot of PDs out here, and I'm so happy that you guys were able to, uh, to make the trek. And then there's the Jacobs media era. I was encouraged to do this by my father, Sidney R. Jacobs, and Saga Z. Christian, both of whom believed in me being a solo act, but I never really went it alone. All along, I've had a kitchen cabinet of caring advisors who have guided me along the way. Steve Goldstein, Buzz Knight, 
Dave Hamilton, Tim Sabian, Greg Strasol, and so many others who could pull me aside and let me know when I was actually doing something that made sense or being a jerk. <laughs> hey, it happens, right? One of those people in our company was Tim Davis, who passed away last year. He was my digital North Star, guiding me through cyberspace. And along the way, I've been blessed with having my two brothers, Bill and Paul, who you just met, by my side, supporting my visions, my ventures, and occasionally my tantrums. Uh, Bill has been a steady hand, often flying below the radar, but quietly doing terrific work. And then there's the guy who introduced me tonight, Paul Jacobs. I would simply not be standing here tonight without Paul. He does more for me, the company, and our clients than any of you will ever know. He is my rudder, he is my conscience and my beacon, and as they say, he ain't heavy. <laughs> I'm proud to have my family here tonight, including my older brother from a different mother, Bruce Nussbaum, who made the trek from Philadelphia. Uh, throughout the Nor'easter. My mother is here, uh, although she wasn't quite sure what rock and roll uh, was all about. She and my dad provided unwavering support for my unconventional dream, and she's watched her three sons succeed in a business that is fun, exciting, and crazy, not exactly the wish of most Jewish mothers. My two kids, Allie and Mickey, I am so proud of both of you, not just because of what you're accomplishing in life, but especially because you're both mentors, good souls who care. I'm so happy you guys are here tonight. And then there's Deborah. We made a pact more than 30 years ago that I would be this radio road warrior while she would provide the stability back on the home front. That's who she is, the rock, the voice of reason, and the person who everyone can depend on. I love you, Deborah, and so appreciate what you've done for me. So being inducted in this community is an obvious clarion call to re-examine your career. It's validation for all of us being honored tonight that goes beyond the paychecks, the backstage passes, the uh, conventions, the ink, all of that. Tonight you'll be reminded about what this entire group has accomplished over these past decades. For me, the classic rock format has become part of my brand, as you saw in the video. But I would not be standing here tonight if I spent my career living in the past. The reason this committee decided to open its doors to me is that I've looked ahead at radio's many challenges and even its tough uh, opportunities. I've had an unparalleled view of this business from the most unique of perspectives. I've been in and out of hundreds of radio stations commercial and public, as well as the conference rooms where those hefty decisions are made. I've hung out in air studios with the best. I've watusied with little Stevens go-go dancers. I've been insulted by Howard Stern. I've met thousands of passionate broadcasters along the way while racking up more than three million Delta miles. So believe me, I've been there. I've been blessed that without the benefit of a business plan or venture capital, I've been able to swashbuckle my way through some exciting adventures. And along the way, I learned that standing pat and staying the course is not a strategy for radio broadcasting. We have to adapt, we have to innovate, we have to throw the long bomb now and then, and as the phrase goes, we have to get more comfortable with being uncomfortable. I didn't invent that, like the good consultant that I am, I stole it. Hey, you gotta, you gotta know the good, there you go. In recent years, I have played the role of agent provocateur in radio circles, not because I don't believe in the radio industry's future, but I know we can do better and that we must do better if this business is to survive the existential challenges facing it from new technologies and the disruption that it's wrought. So again, I stand before you tonight so deeply honored to go into the National Radio Hall of Fame. I look forward to fighting the good fight with many of you in the years to come. I still have my fastball. There's lots of gas in the tank, and there's a lot of uh, windmills to fight. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.